prevalence of autism spectrum disorders and the impact autism has had on the individuals with the disorder as well as their families and society. But this growing awareness has been paralleled by an increasing emphasis on the importance of understanding and treating the disorder, an emphasis evident in the government as well as in the research and clinical communities. Research into autism and neurodevelopmental disorders has become one of the most perplexing and interesting areas of neuroscience inquiry, but often producing more questions than answers. As you will hear, however, our understanding of this once enigmatic disorder is growing, and with deeper understanding comes the hope of new treatments for families and children with autism. Science is driven by the desire to understand ourselves and the world in which we live, and through understanding, improving this world. It begins with a question. It follows a path, sometimes meandering, sometimes more direct, but always trying to gear towards an answer. It requires and involves bright and patient people with different and sometimes very conflicting ideas to share information, examine how all the individual pieces fit together. It needs visionary people who can imagine, despite the incompleteness and missing pictures, what the total picture might look like. And it above all requires people with sensitivity and expertise in filling in these gaps to complete the whole picture. It is only through collaboration and integration of these different aspects of scientific discovery and clinical care that real progress is made. I'm proud to say that a partnership between the provincially funded Ontario Brain Institute and the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research, CIFAR, has created an environment for this sort of meaningful collaboration and exchange of ideas to occur. This week, we've been very fortunate, uh, the two groups, to have a participate in a workshop focused on understanding and advancing of uh, autism. And this was held for OBI and CIFAR funded researchers from across Ontario and indeed across the world. In attendance are basic and translational scientists hailing from multiple disciplines, but united under a common vision of finding new ways to approach the research and treatment of autism. Again, looking to fill in the missing pieces and again, gain insight to reveal the big picture. And this cross-pollination of ideas and a forward-looking vision is just the start. One of the highlights of this workshop is tonight's public lecture, where you're going to hear an overview of many of the things that we shared, an overview of recent genetic advances in autism, and then we're going to follow this by a panel of experts at the leading edge of autism research. This public lecture reflects both OBI's and CIFAR's recognition of the necessity of moving research beyond the lab and into hands, the hands of those who can apply it, and again, the importance of sharing information with those who need it. So our integrated approach to knowledge translation strives to involve all, involve all stakeholders, such as clinicians, researchers, industry, patients, and their advocates, and tonight is no exception. I would like to introduce Jill Farber from Autism Speaks Canada, whose involvement made tonight's event possible. Jill was named Vice Chair of Autism Speaks Canada's Board of Directors in January 2012 and has been a member of the board since September 2006. Jill has acted as the Chair of the Family Services Community Grants Review Committee since the launch of the program in 2010. And prior to her involvement with Autism Speaks Canada, Jill was a behavioral consultant and an instructor trainer for children with autism spectrum disorder. And now I would like to in invite Jill to the stage to say a few words and introduce tonight's speaker. Jill. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. It's such an amazing to be a part of this with all of you. My name is Jill Farber, and I am the Vice Chair of the Board of Directors of Autism Speaks. Firstly, I'd like to begin by applauding Ontario Brain Institute and the Canadian Institute for Applied Research for bringing some of the lead scientists in the autism field in a workshop forum. 
In the last two days, I've had the privilege to listen to researchers from all different modalities come together as a cohesive group to collaborate and discuss their questions, their findings, and their leads into further understanding the science of autism. It has been quite a learning experience. When CIFAR and OBI applied for a Family Service Grant from Autism Speaks Canada to partner with us in sharing some of this information with the public and promoting knowledge transfer, we jumped on the opportunity. We at Autism Speaks Canada believe very strongly in both collaboration and sharing knowledge. Thank you for having us and allowing us to be part of this very special evening. They have also given me a great honor to introduce one of those great Canadian minds. He is one of the world's top autism researchers. He is a senior scientist and director of the Center of Applied Genomics at the Hospital for Sick, Child Sick Children. He's a professor of medicine and the director of McLaughlin Center of Molecular Medicine at the University of Toronto. He sits on so many scientific boards and has won numerous honors. I could not possibly name all of them in the three minutes. Along with these credentials, he is a true researcher who spends a lot of time in the lab because he is really driven to make new discoveries and find the genetic answers that will ultimately help us move the science forward in the field of autism. Best of all, he is a nice guy and a hockey dad. He speaks to layman, that would be me, in layman's terms. He does this because he gets that knowledge transfer is so important at all levels. So I am honored to introduce to all of you one of our great Canadian minds and a real nice scientist, Dr. Stephen Shear.